Oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, welcome to Thunder Nerds. I'm Brian Hinton. I'm Janelle Pizarro. And I'm Frederick Philip Von Weiss. And thank you for consuming the Thunder Nerds, a conversation with the people, people's, people's plural, behind the technology that love what they do. And do tech good. Ah, oh. We're doing tech. That gum. Hey, where are we at, Brian? We're in St. Pete. St. Pete. The Brand Design Conference. It's the what year? Uh, I think it's the 27th year. <laughs> Maybe the 10th? It's the 10th anniversary. 10th anniversary. 10th. Yeah. <laughs> Seven years at this uh, location, Palladium. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, yeah, we're, this is the second day of us uh, live broadcasting, you know, off, you know, talking to all the speakers. It's been fantastic. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, the, who, who are we with to, right now? Who are uh, we people? are with Quan Luo, which we've had on the show. Welcome, Quan. And we have Samantha Warren. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being on the show. Yeah, we uh we got everybody on the show at once, so uh, yeah. Yeah, we're okay. yeah we're talking about trying to get everyone in, but I don't know if we yeah we were just gonna do the whole room. like Ellen selfie thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, like, hey, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah welcome. In an, in an hour from now, we're gonna have everybody on this couch. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be exciting. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so how are your talks? Yeah. yeah. I think it was good. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean, there was no Q and A, so it's kind of harder to know. Uh, no Q and A. Really? Yeah. Did I, you? Can could, was it? They said you guys kind of, or did you guys just like? Jesus told me it's like whatever I want. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> cool. Like okay, guys, dance party on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I would have done that with an option. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for this last part, I need everyone to come up yeah. and shake. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it would be really nice if you just Taylor Swift it out. Just be like, well, now you know for the next time that you do this talk. Exactly. Okay, yeah. Actually, guys, and stop talking. Uh huh. All be awesome. That would yeah. be a nice, uh, you know, yeah. since everyone's been sitting, you know, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah. You make everybody really really comfortable. Good. What you could do is have your slides, make everyone read your slides, and, you know, like kind of switch people oh. out. So that way you just you yeah. create the presentation, okay. but have someone else read it. Read it. That's yeah. not bad. Yeah. So, Quan, since, since we're talking to you, let's let's yes. start with you. What exactly do you do? We've had you on the show before, but for uh, new um, people listening, yeah. watching to the show, tell us a little bit about you. Sure. Um, I'm currently the director of design at a very small startup. Uh, we build databases. It's called Carpet Labs. Love so, being a design director in a very tech-driven, like technology-driven enterprise company means I'm in charge of doing the carpet design. So there's an interface that comes with the database. That tells you how your database is doing. So um, we designed that, and also we designed a brand. So what does the mm -hmm. company look like? What's the website? How's that working? And also we do rent research. So those are kind of the three main parts of um, design that um, yeah lead the team. Oh, that's really cool. And uh, Samantha, what do you do? Something very similar. Oh, okay. um, at Adobe, uh, my design team does both Adobe Stock and Adobe Typekit. Ooh. So we do the product design, um, not as much the branding, but uh, a little bit of everything. We really think about how users can level up their design skills by having access to all sorts of fonts and images within their apps. Was it like working for such a small company? <laughs> <laughs> I hear this Adobe thing is a startup. Yeah. yeah um, well, it's quite the opposite. Um, oh. There are a lot of people. Um, but. Both of my teams feel very much like startups. Mm -hmm. So there's like a startup yeah. culture within that. And a lot of my job is actually kind of connecting them to the other parts of the organization. So um, some days it feels very much like I work at a startup, and some days it feels like I'm part of a very large corporation. Well, that's Ooh. nice that you get the feel of both yeah. from it, yeah. which is an interesting one. So what, what was your talk uh, specifically about? Cats. Cats? <laughs> oh, OK. I love cats. I like cats. <laughs> How to declaw kittens. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. No, you yeah, do not say that. That is her talk, not mine. No, there's nothing. Don't declaw cats. I would just say that's her talk, not mine. I don't share these points with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I would never do that. <laughs> Did you answer this? Apparently, everybody's offended at your talk. Um, well, that was not her talk. Nothing to do with cats. Well, actually, there was, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it was completely humane in every way. Um, so it's wow. about like how at Adobe, given that there's like tons of different products, like we literally have yeah. like over a hundred products at Adobe. How we um, work in an agile design environment where we're shipping all the time and making changes to stuff, but then we're also innovating at the same time. So like getting outside of the box and um, keeping the train moving while like thinking about the blue sky. That's really cool. Yeah. 
That's really, really nifty. So how, how do you um, end up doing that? Like, even when you do have two teams out of like a hundred things, how do you go about, you know, making new things and, and growing in your own team? So we started uh, this program called the Design Stretch, and the whole idea is mm. that um, you know, like you think about sprinting, right? Sprinting yeah. is all about getting something out in the world, getting feedback, like finding out what's going on. Um, so we decided to take a step back and actually have very collaborative sessions called Design Stretches, where we bring together different people from the organization and we think like outside the box, mm. um, so that we can have a blue sky vision. Um, so it's all about like the entire talk is kind of how we organize that and how op we operationalize it and codified it, so that you can actually do this every so often, so your product is thinking big and uh, moving in a, in a more blue sky direction. Mm. Okay, could you give us some examples? I can give you as much detail as I can given the products. Sure, sure. Yeah, so like for example, um, uh, being that I work with both fonts and uh, stock, which includes like templates and vectors and all the stuff you use like in order to, like icons in order to make um, a different design, um, we wanted to really think about like what it would mean for creativity. What is the future of creativity if you actually have all these people on a platform creating at the same time and you have access to these things? Um, so we talked about, uh, you know, in 2020, like if you think in 2020, how will this actually change the way people are making things? Mm -hmm. um, and so we did an entire stretch on that, for example. But That's also like we sort of talked about like what's the future of typography? If you think about like in the future when people are using touch devices, how mm -hmm. will they actually manipulate typography in the future? Mm -hmm. Did a whole bunch of them since. No, so how does that, talking about touch devices and typography, what about, um, how, how does that uh, affect with, uh, what, what's the Adobe, um, uh, the Adobe type? Um, type kit? Type kit, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I, I, I lost the thought of it. No, I mean, uh, there's, no, I get it. so type kit actually is quite a, a few different products. I mean, there's like type kit, which um, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but if you open up one of your Adobe apps mm -hmm. and you go up to your type menu, you yeah, can actually right access there. There like thousands of fonts and they're like, uh, you mm -hmm. know, free with your subscription, you can use them. And so there's that aspect of things like what, how do you get people to, to like find that faster? And, and how do you get them to leave that and go to work <laughs> yes. and have so many fonts? So many yeah. fonts. There's so many, exactly. Like how can we like make it smarter for people Twitter to find this stuff? Fonts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, a balance. Fonter. Fonter. <laughs> And all it is is just a stream of fonts for designers. <laughs> oh, at. I would look at that all day long. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, oh. Fonter, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fonter. Um, so, I mean, there's stuff like that, like thinking about like not only like how do you access yeah. fonts, but like how you can like help people to discover all of the different options they have with the font that they chose. Mm -hmm. um, and then like just really thinking Wait. outside the box, you know, about like what app the applications of the future will look like. Like, I mean, we're thinking about it as like Photoshop yeah. and Illustrator and InDesign, but like in the future, it'll be all sorts of different types of things. Um, and some of those things may be like on touch devices, for example, yeah. they could be in the cloud, all sorts of different like possibilities really. Put Photoshop and Illustrator on the iPad already. <laughs> 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 no, do you kind of want that? I really want that. Yeah. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, have you, have you not heard that? <laughs> no, no, I've Every heard, day? There's lots of stuff I hear, but I love hearing from so, customers what they really want yeah. so that we can think more yeah. about you know, get, getting them what they need. Mm -hmm. so that's really live I have to use Affinity Designer, I mean, for this Affinity Photo instead of Photoshop, so. Yeah, that would be a nice it's on the iPad. It's actually pretty good, too. Oh, no, is it? Yeah. yeah. Well, why don't we talk a little okay. bit about your talk, Mark? Yeah. yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> She's like, that's it. That was yeah. I actually just stood on the stage in silence. Yeah. From my months. understanding, yeah. you walked out there with a bunch of hats, yeah. and you were trying on top hats and beanies, yeah. and and then I talked about cats. And talked about cats, right? Yeah. And, but but you're you're pro not be flying. For the hats thing, do you too? Do you remember the book about the hats? About the about the man who had a bunch of hats. Does anyone remember that kids I mean, book? I, I feel like I remember seeing some sort of illustration of <sighs> somebody wearing. No one remembers the kids book. I Sorry, I have a kid it. and I I don't have that book. It was this guy Ryan who it was this guy who yeah. wore a bunch of hats <laughs> and he was walking along and the and monkeys apparently kept stealing his hats. Are you sure this isn't a dream you uh, And then at the end, all the monkeys are in the tree with the hats. I think I do remember. Don't entertain his thoughts. On this. <laughs> this is some weird vivid dream. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so your talk was 
kind of about hats. Yes, Tell us. totally. Um, so yeah, I talked about how to kick ass wearing many hats. Uh -huh. It's modern days, we all wear many hats, right? Like gotcha. you are doing a podcast, but you also are a creative director. Mm -hmm. Samantha has other projects going on in career, in like in your day to day. You are connecting the dots. You are, but also you are directing. You are doing so many different people's responsibilities in your own role. So. I didn't want to talk about how to wear many hats because we're already doing that. But I want to talk about what's the next level and like how do you kick that up a notch? And how do you kick ass doing that? How do you enjoy doing it? And what does success look like? So I talked about um, having a long term strategy and what are the parts to the strategy. Nice. Okay. So what are some of those strategies? Yeah. So to me, it's fundamentally come down to three things. First, you just need to know yourself. I think Carl Smith last night actually talked a little bit about that already. Mm -hmm. So like, and I think Aristotle kind of said, you know, to know yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. So sure. really knowing your strength and knowing your weaknesses and not just knowing like, oh, I kind of know I'm a designer, but also I can prototype and things. So like, how well can you do those things? Do you have a crystal clear mm -hmm. idea mm -hmm. on what you are T-shaped look like. Let's talk a lot about T-shaped people, professionals. Yeah. And do you know exactly like, do you, how wide exactly is the arm of your team? Or how deep are you actually in some of those areas? So if you go through that exercise, you'll find like you'll probably be surprised at what actually the shape come out to be. Like, oh I didn't expect that. I thought I was a T, mm. you know, kind of like deep in those areas, but if you will compare across your skills, you might be, you know, a T that has a very wide leg. You're like very good in multiple things. Mm -hmm. So, so that's the first part. And the second part is how do you read your environment and make that into to to your advantage. Mm -hmm. So I use the example if you're a cat, if you you're not, you are a cactus. If you have <laughs> oh, a cactus. I want to be a cactus. <laughs> you don't want to, but you such, so you can be a you cactus. So let's say Brian is a cactus. God, <laughs> God, yes, please. But Brian will not survive if Brian lives in. The Amazons, right? Like living oh, in a uh, rainforest. I mean, I might. Not doing great. You might, you might not oh, do great. Okay. So yeah. the fact that like the cactus is like perfectly fine on its own. There's nothing wrong with the cactus. But the environment, <laughs> if the environment is not supportive, mm -hmm. you're not going to grow. You're not going to be able to kick ass. So I want to kick ass as a cactus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you've got to go to the desert, right? You have to go to an environment that's conducive. Mm -hmm. So how do you find that? Um, so that's the second part. Kind of knowing, just take notes of your day to day, and then jot down. Like, oh wait, here is how I was so productive because I was alone in the coffee shop. I was just turning out ideas. Or you'd be like whiteboarding and doing design structures with team. You'd be like, oh, that was awesome. That's like the best part of my job. So like, what are those moments look like in order to tell me you about your environment? Mm -hmm. So finally, it's the part I was seeming a little bit out of that kind of you know knowing yourself and knowing the environment aspect, which is to tell your story. So if we don't tell our stories, none of the speakers will be on stage. Ah. So it's the idea of if you, an idea is just nothing if it's living your head, mm -hmm. right? We build a society, we build a community around sharing ideas. And that's what we're all here for. Right. So yeah, it's kind of to, if you don't talk about it, it's, you're not gonna feel okay, yes. you need You need a group, like a role of a crowd, so a role of a crowd can hear. Mm -hmm. So you need, you need that, you should kind of talk about it. So, yeah. yeah, we all need people sometimes, Just more sometimes. times than often. Yeah. yeah. If you're a cactus, you don't really need people. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah. Well, what are some of the actionable takeaways then from that? Yeah, so I would say take our, what's the also another challenging part we talked about earlier about how you, if you have a, things to say, if you want to do it later, you just never get to it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's about carving out time and build that into a schedule. So do you do like a quarterly tea review? Like what are the skills you've grown on the last three months? And that gives you a good sense of like, oh, am I going too wide or am I going too deep? Like that is your time to like adjust, you know, your schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then come out of action plan for the next quarter. And building like every career you had or every big moment you had. Oh, that was awesome. That was like the best part of my job. Jot that down. Because later on the connect the dots will make sense. Like what are they all saying? What are all those moments of awesomeness saying about an environment that could be potentially very conducive. And if you want to tell your story, you have to, you know, carve out time. Be like, hey, in a company meeting, ask your CEO, ask your boss for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Let me talk about this design initiative that I've been working on with my team. Let's talk about it. Like, I think it's the company needs to hear it. It's very important. So you have to do those things. You have to build into your schedule. You can't just be like, oh, I will get to it. You will never get to it. We're too busy for that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Do you think um, that we should be doing that not only on a personal level, but 
a team and, and company level as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Great that's, question. Totally. I think it's, it, if you, like I think Amazon and Jeff Bezos have managed to talk about the idea of like high standards, right? Mm -hmm. like if you have a really high standard, everyone strives to be better. So I think that comes from the individual level, but also come from the company level. Mm -hmm. So if every individual has such a acute sense of self-awareness, and then knowing what environment makes them successful and mm -hmm. being able to carve out those opportunities, like create design strategy for your team, then yeah, the, the company, the team should get together. You know, okay, what is the strength of the team? We actually do that to identify what are the roles we need to hire inside mm -hmm. of our company, right? Like we know, hey, this is the strength of our team, but we really, in order to kick ass, in order to be a very well-balanced team, we need a role that fills those gaps for us. And regardless of what that role looks like, that's what we need. So yeah, I think you totally do that from a team level. And then on the company, maybe it's, you know, zoom out a little bit more. Like, what do you need to focus on? Smarter. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, that makes absolute sense. Mm -hmm. I actually have a question uh, for you that I actually asked you at the last um, last time we spoke. Mm -hmm. um, is It's very similar to the question that I asked her, which is, how is it like to work with a team of you know, all designers who are all fantastic, right? Like, um, she's a designer who leads, you know, devs and designers, which I think is the coolest thing. But now, like, you've got an entire team of, like, designers, right? We all have these beautiful visions. How how cool or awesome or terrible is it to, like, um, to have to, like, Look at that as a as a whole. And Fucking of awesome! Right. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. I go into work every day. I hate it. It's no, I can't even tell you because, like, I mean, like, the whole my whole goal is to build a team that basically, like, I come into work every day and then they're doing shit that I would never be able to do on my own, right? Like, yeah. um, and Make so me yeah, look good. Yeah. yeah, they're all yeah. They're, they're all so awesome. Yeah. The team itself. I mean, one of the things I'm I'm a big proponent on is building a very diverse team, and so it's. Um, diverse, and when I say the word diverse, I mean it in every single way. It's not just in um, gender and ethnicity and background. It's also in location. It's in yeah. um, skill sets. So um, we also have a researcher on our team. We have folks who have a little bit of a research background and also a little bit of an AI background. And that so everybody actually is um, uh, different enough that there's only a little bit of overlap. And so even when I um, show my team org chart, like. I show them in Venn diagrams because it's a little bit yeah. of everybody overlapping a bit. And so um, the point is so that they all complement each other. So yeah. it's like everyone can grow together. Yeah. I right? love so that. it's like a stronger mesh that they all um, have. And so for example, we do have some folks on the team who can build websites and are developers cool. too. And um, man, sometimes they're the ones that give me the most because like they kick such ass, they can do such amazing things. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's just like, it's really what keeps me going. I mean, like, all together, the unit. I mean, what is it like, Voltron or whatever? Like Voltron. Yeah. 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 You get all those lines. You put them together. Yeah. Together, they come together and do stuff that I could never imagine to be able to do on my own, or any of them can really do on their own. So it's great to like see that. It's energizing. That's really nifty. That well, makes my soul smile. Oh, uh, well, so would you say are some of the biggest challenges then of that? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So some of the bigger challenges are. Um, I mean, like. We work with product teams that don't necessarily work in that way, right? They might yeah. like, have much more siloed approaches. And so um, we there's like all sorts of different philosophies of how you organize a team oh, and stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. And especially in in product companies. Um, and uh, you know, we're trying to keep up with that all the time. We're trying to maintain that sort of like cross-functional discipline um, and thinking about users first. Like so mm -hmm. really we, we're very user-centered and thinking about like the journey instead of specifics of the technology stack because that's easy like that's really easy to like want to fall into doing um but we try really hard to keep everything user focused uh, in order to um maintain that across the company and so yeah it's really challenging i mean we're kind of always sort of reorganizing a little bit in like ways that are like hey like how can we you know take someone whose skill set might be like a little bit of prototyping and a little bit of visual design and and keep them really motivated by working on a different project or stretching a different skill. So mm, the hope yeah. is, is that yeah. you can do that. And some people don't want to like stretch skills. Sometimes people just want to like focus and really dive deep and on something some else. Some people really just want to like, oh, I want to learn some stuff. I want to, yeah. and I, you, you yeah. have such a great pool of talent to, to uh, 
um, to, to get inspiration from. Yeah. I'm sure everybody's probably tapping each other saying, hey, show me this, show me a little bit yes. of that. Yeah. 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 So actually, right before I um, came out here, one of the things that our team did was we kind of broke down into, we call them squads. Uh -huh. um, we actually kind of took two cross sections of the team and put them together because the point where there's like 12 of us now, like uh -huh. we're really reaching the point where we needed to kind of chunk up the team a little bit more so that that learning could continue yeah. and that collaboration could continue without it being like feeling like it's always like a big deal to get together. Mm -hmm. I always wonder too in the larger team, especially with a large pool of talented about ego, about how like balancing everyone. So, because so, mm -hmm. people often, I mean, posture syndrome is big in the industry or like you do something amazing and then there's 30 other people on your team and they're doing something like, you know, that looks better. You know, managing that probably yeah. is. I feel oh like yeah, yeah. Too. I think yeah. To yeah. jump onto Brian's point, like you were talking about the org chart being more of a Venn diagram. Yeah. Do you ever come across any kind of uh, ego issues, um, and how do you deal with such issues? I would say less ego issues and more the imposter syndrome yeah. issues. Yeah. Like okay. a lot of times, that's a big part of my job is, um, you know. Uh, keeping people motivated and understanding the bigger picture. Like mm -hmm. they focus on all these different things and then it, like they're specifically kind of looking at through like blinders sometimes, mm -hmm. right? To focus yeah. on their stuff. So my job is to come in and be like, hey, like you have no idea how badly you kicked ass today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, cause a lot of times people will see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even like, yeah. so for example, I have someone on my team who thinks more strategically and another person who's definitely much more, <laughs> um, you know, thinking about uh, shipping a lot, right? Sure. And so it's yeah. easy to say like, okay, you know, you can quantify shipping, but like strategy sometimes takes years mm -hmm. and like really making sure that you build a culture where both of those things yeah. are valued. Um, but that's a lot of, yeah, what my job ends up being. Yeah, ma macro versus micro thinking. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing I'm curious, both, this is for both of you guys, whoever wants to go first. Uh, have you, you both presented a few times, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, have you had any um, oopses? Uh, we were talking with Carl Smith earlier. He, yes. He flipped off a shoe and the flip flop hit someone in the head. <laughs> in the front row. Uh, in the front row. Uh, I'm curious if you had, it doesn't have to be something that extreme, but like, completely freaking going blank on what you're talking about or, or just some, that something that happened that, that you, I would, you know, would yeah. like to share. I'm curious. Or hit someone in the head. That's yeah, or hit someone in the head. <laughs> Preferably. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's more of a, like, yeah, I don't have an example. The first thing that came to mind, like, I guess I'll share is when I was doing a very large workshop, uh, for O'Reilly one year Ooh. at one of their, um, O'Reilly like design conferences, I was running a workshop. And the workshop is super interactive, so we use a lot of like we, we use a lot of games, an idea of like improv games in design exercises, right? To help everyone to think on their feet and keep things moving. So in order to keep things moving, I had to be like, all right, there's no latecomers. I wanted to make it super clear that you're <laughs> yeah. in. You, know, you can't just walk into in the middle of the improv yeah, game. You yeah. ruin it for everyone. Yeah. yeah. Did you so lock the door? I did. <laughs> I, I totally got yelled at, but by fire hazard. Yeah, I totally got you on that. Oh, mm. Anyways, but that's like one thing. Lock doors. Oh, that's not so bad. Yeah. yeah. And hitting anyone in the head with yeah. a club. Carl. Give There's some, no fire. Give me something right? worse. Yeah, it's really hard for me to come up with anything because I think it was just like blackout. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sure a really horrible thing. 30 things minutes happen. later, you wake up, you're like, wait. Did I do it? Like, yeah. <laughs> How was I? I mean, like, I really have no idea. Like, um, you know, I used to actually do stand up comedy like <laughs> way back in nice. the day. She was on um, SNL, don't you remember? Yeah. <laughs> I kind of do. Well, so, do you want to buy Elias Wig? Kristen Wig? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> well, I love the Kristen Wig. No, what I learned, I said, this is the thing, like, I do, I like black out when I'm on stage. And so um, somebody showed me a video of me, and I was like, oh no, like, I'm not funny. <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much like you know I kind of turn it off while I'm on stage and if shit goes wrong because obviously like it was bad enough I was like oh my god I'm like horrible at this why am I doing this that um Aww. I don't really pay any attention anymore like I have to just kind of like well I think where like, everything is going with yeah. anything like you have to you build it up right yes I mean, did, did you give it a chance and humor is very subjective. Yeah. No, I said I now speak at conferences. You were like, you just did it once, you were like, nope. See, humor is very subjective, though. Like, you may not find it funny, or you may not find it funny. Find most we may find it funny. Yeah. And totally. Also, I'm curious, because I feel like it might have been a funny thing. What was the cat thing? Oh, the cat thing. So, um, I, it's like, the, I, talk, I talk a little yeah. bit about um, how I got the idea for a design stretch by, um, 
uh, getting out of my comfort zone and trying to, uh, a friend of mine actually like uh, installed a cat video game on my phone and I hate video games. Oh, and I started okay. playing the cat video game. What is it? What was the, like, what's Super Cat? It's called Nico Atsumi. Oh, I don't know that one. And that's kind of part of it is, is it's from the Japanese app store. She okay. actually tunneled oh. into a VPN. Oh. And, and so it's all in Japanese. So I had no idea how to play the game, which is kind of a parallel to wow. you can imagine how some people open up an Adobe yeah, app like Photoshop yeah. and they're like, this is like in another language. How do I use this thing? And what's the point? Yeah. I don't what's get it. Yeah. yeah, so it was kind of a parallel there. That's hmm. interesting. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Huh. But right. I usually get off stage and we're like, tell me more about cats. I'm like, can we talk about design? <laughs> <laughs> I, and also, I want to know a little bit more. We talked a little bit with you, but I'd like to know more about like where you're from and like, you know, who you guys are. Like, what's your background? Your, um, whoever wants to go first. You, want to say? you can. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so my background <laughs> is in journalism. So I went to school for journalism, and then I started in a very small design studio. Um, that's where I kind of first off wanted to experience the real world, taking on a lot of plan work and to see how that was like. So I got to, what was really exciting is that I got to work on like the, the rebranding for Associated Press. So that was really cool. And then because I had a, the journalism dream, I well, went back to media. So I worked for the Washington Post and then at the time when the iPad first came out. So I was leading their design for the first iPad app. So the entire Washington Post tried to move to mobile and what was that experience was like. And then I kind of been staying in house since because I really like working for a company that everyone else is liking to work like same everyone goals, else has yeah. the same goal yeah, on the same yeah. team. Yeah, I like that too. Which really liked. So I stayed in house and jumped between kind of startup and more direct companies. I worked at Etsy before I left and I joined Coverage. So yeah. that's awesome. And that's right when uh, the company you were at got was getting bought by Etsy. Right? Yeah. 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 So that's how I kind of end up at, at, at Etsy. Well, where are you from? Like. Uh, Oh yeah, like, originally like your... I grew up in Shanghai, China. Okay. Oh, um, and... I was there until right after high school, so I joined, I only moved to the US when I for college essentially. Wow, okay. Yeah. Okay, and then you ended up just being like, hey, this isn't the battle stage. Yeah, this is not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Jokey joke teller? No, um, the worst joke teller. Oh my god. Um, I, I gotta get a joke. I feel like this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No pressure, but pressure. I've already told all my jokes, see? You don't even know. Yeah. Hi. I'm from Virginia, originally. I grew up in Virginia. Um, I feel I'm a little bit like a cat. I've had multiple lives, um, but I worked and lived in Virginia for a while. I actually got my start in web design working for the U.S. Army. Wow. wow. Yes. Uh, basically, I went to school for design, and someone uh, working for the Army said, hey, we've hired people who know how to code, and we try and teach them to design, but we think we can we would like to try teaching someone to design how to code. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. how I got my start. Because back, back then, you know, there weren't like code schools and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So um, that way I saw it kind of as an opportunity to learn code. You know, worked in a bunch of agencies around there. I lived in DC for about eight years and um, coming up on seven years ago now, I moved out to San Francisco and worked for um, Twitter for a little while out there. I um, run my own business, worked for different startups, and now, you know, been in Adobe for about three years. Wow, that's really cool. So, what was the language that you first learned? How you, uh, just HTML and CSS. Okay. You know, yeah. like I mean, just like straight up building like the really small websites when you did like little tiny screens. Yeah, <laughs> which is weird because we're now back down to little tiny screens. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think people used to do like uh, six hundred pixels across, yeah. and then the uh, you know obviously we went to the nine sixty. Yep. All that. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's funny. Okay, so let's hear the joke. There's no joke. Oh, that was hilarious! <laughs> See, that's, that's I got one. What? What kind of? No. Oh, no. What, what kind of no. Clothes? I should probably stop. Uh, so, now, I right? think. Oh, yeah. that was the show, guys. <laughs> what kind of clothes is a houseware? Oh no, I know this one. What? An address. Oh. Pretty no. good. <laughs> he's it's like. A joke. He's like the worst. Yeah, it is a joke. <laughs> Dad jokes are the yeah. ones that you're just like, I hate myself for listening. <laughs> yeah, the no. pre Everybody secretly loved my joke. Previous episode, uh, we, we did too many view jokes. Oh, I, I don't remember that at all. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. You, you blacked out. <laughs> the only way, only way to survive. It's true. Yeah. And I think it's being a speaker, it's hard. Like, you don't get immediate feedback. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's not, that's why I don't really do a lot of talks. I do. I like to do a lot of workshops. Yeah. They're much harder to plan, which is mm -hmm. a lot of variable. Sure. But you get immediate feedback. And yeah. giving a talk is difficult. 
but I don't really feel awake. Like I'm looking at audience. Are you like knowing what I'm saying? Like is that you know, like do I need to explain myself? Just more? Start throwing your flip flops. It's, yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe that's why yeah, I'm talking. Like no, I, I teach an outside video. I will invite everyone up. I'll prepare yeah, the slides, like and everyone yeah. else is gonna read it. You yeah. can understand. What See, you're, you're welcome. So, how many, how many of them do you do a year then? Um, I haven't been speaking for a while, for like maybe two years. So I took kind of a two years hiatus in speaking. Uh -huh. So this year, I'm I'm here, and I'm also going to South Carolina for convergence. Oh okay, right. right. Um, yeah, I think so far that's it. Okay. That's awesome. How about yourself, Samantha? Um, I took about about two year break too. So this is my second conference in a little while. Um, took a break. Uh, was doing conferences though, especially when I work for myself all the time. Yeah. yeah. So it was a. I used to do a thing called style tiles. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I talked a lot about that mm. at different conferences. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of style tiles were like the start of the whole design system movement. I feel like yeah. I was really, like right after that, I was like, oh, let's style patterns, and then like, oh wait. We can make whole systems. Yep. <laughs> yep. It still comes back around. It's really wild yeah. to see yeah. it full circle now. Mm -hmm. I think I remember you talking about that. So I, I did that. a lot of yeah. talks talking about that. <laughs> so I know you guys prepare questions for each other, so I'll let you go. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> this is this is actually I like that. Like, like yeah. come up with a question for each other. Totally. Yeah, live, live, live. I have so I have so many questions. Really interesting to have that. Background and I used to do, <laughs> Very short me. I used to do improv. Oh so, really? Yeah. So uh -huh. that's like the rules of improv really are applicable to. No yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like I don't. Do you? How do you incorporate that in design stretch? Like how do you get everyone's juice flowing? So it's all, all about the storytelling. So I don't tell jokes, but I do tell stories. Okay. And so I think that's a key piece of like um, defining a vision, especially for a product, is telling a story that people can relate yeah. to, understand, and then apply to thinking about a product. So. I do. Th I think storytelling is one of the like most important parts of being a designer. Like, it's yes. one thing to show your designs and talk yeah. through, but like to tell the actual story of the person who's going to be using it. And like, what are they doing before they use this thing? What What's it like? How are they feeling? And then ta talking about like how it then changed their life, how it transformed mm -hmm. what they're mm -hmm. um, actually doing from a day to day basis. Um, that's I think really one of the most powerful things a designer can do. So the storytelling mm -hmm. aspect for sure. Yeah. So how do you teach designers to better stories by getting them talking to the users who use them and whiteboarding yeah. and having group conversations yeah i mean i think like one of the most important things that i is part of my process now is um videotaping mm -hmm. users like just going out and being like hey yeah. like can you can you show me how you use fonts mm -hmm. like just they're like what like what do you mean and i'm like can you just start making something you yeah. know and they yeah. start telling you and they're like you know, you start hearing their stories, and you're like, "Really? You would use a graffiti font for that? No kidding! When did yeah. you get into that?" And yeah, things you would story. never think about. Yeah, and so I think that um, being able to like understand and see what users do, um, and then that helps them to tell their story. Mm -hmm. I think just like not making the designer feel like it's their burden, yeah, but more they're like the person who's there to um, be the conduit for someone else's story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we yeah. talk a lot about like design. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like. Hmm pulling stuff out, like you're pulling stuff through you. Yeah, totally, yeah. yeah. That's and a good way to put it. So you live in Brooklyn. Yeah, I do. Tell me about what it's like to be a designer in Brooklyn. It feels like oh, so much is happening there right now. It's true. Um, we actually, our company recently uh, just talked about it. Oh, we need to, we all you know how like East Coast companies and always hire East Coast people yeah. and West Coast companies do the same, right? But <laughs> it's easier, but the grass is always greener. Sure. So every once in a while, I'll be like, let's hire on the West Coast. <laughs> and, then, and then you talk to people on the West Coast, like, let's hire people on the East Coast. You talk out talent on both areas as a company. But I think, cause I think it's a pretty exciting time to be in New York and Brooklyn for, yeah. I mean, for design. Because one thing, I felt like the New York area has such a huge advantage over it, just like diversity. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, we, we're not just about tech. There are yeah. a lot of Fashion. There are a ton of literature. Food. There are a lot of yes. <laughs> yes. There are a lot of food and a lot of like um, you know publication yeah. media are like all based there. So there's kind of this. It kind of got influence from all sorts of different places, which is really really interesting. Like you go to meet, you go to designer meetups, and sometimes you have you know, people who are in quite different backgrounds yeah. showing up, and not just working on tech. So that's cool. Yeah. What was it like working at Etsy? 
I think it was really fun. It's one of those experiences that you are like, wow, you left and you took a lot of great things away. It was, oh wow, like I never knew a company could do that. So for example, at Etsy we had this thing called a last lecture. So if you're an employee and then you're leaving the company, oh. one way the company stops you from leaving is that you have to give a lecture. What? And that would be your last lecture. You can talk anything. That's amazing. Wow. What, was your, what was yours? Uh, yeah. So I, I kind of gave it a one on like, what is what are my learnings are like what did what did I learn in those hmm. those two and a half years on a Etsy? So huh. that was a great practice. Hmm. I left. It kind of really stuck with me, and I'll hmm. never I go. I would try to introduce it to the new company that I work with. So so there's a lot of like really kind of like Etsy quirky things that we do. That kind of really, hmm. you know, it's just like really that. reflective yeah. of culture. Um, it's really good. Well, I've even worked yeah. at as a, a beginning thing too. Like, come in and give a little bit of a lecture of what you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. Figma yeah. does a thing with new hires apparently where uh, you have to give a presentation about three things, I believe, things or people that have influenced you. Mm. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. That's interesting. So it gives insight into, uh, I guess, you as a person. Yeah, totally. Sure. And also, yeah. there's a lot of benefit there to yeah. uh, learn about those other people. Yeah. 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 Oh, how cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're just oh. about at the end. Do, do, um, do you guys have anything else you want to share with our audience before we go? <laughs> look at, they look at yeah. each other. Back <laughs> you. I don't know. So, what, how's the best way people could get a hold of you and find out more about you? Yeah. yeah. Um, I write on Medium. So, and then I'm, on Twitter, it's always just my full name, K U A L K U A N L U O. Yeah, and we'll put a link to obviously all that in the show notes. And yeah. um, I'm Samantha Toy on Twitter. Toy is my middle name, and you can also find a post on Medium about the design stretch. So I'm Samantha Toy on Medium too. And um, if you want to talk about fonts. <laughs> Like, please get in touch with me. I want to hear more about how you use fonts. Um, so uh, reaching out via be either of those mediums is fine. Excellent. Well, thank you guys yeah. so much for being on the show. Thank you. 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 Thank you.